Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video, I have a special guest, reliability and test guy Jr. And what are we going to be doing today, buddy? Blowing up batteries! That's right, we're going to be blowing up batteries! Alright, so today, we're going to be using a 21700 5 amp hour lithium ion cell that we are that I've already instrumented with Nichrome wire that we're going to set into Thermal Runaway. What is Thermal Runaway, buddy? It's like when a chain reaction gets hotter, 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 then catches on fire. That's right, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and catches on fire. You ready to do this? Yeah! Let's do it! All right, so we're building the test setup here for running this PPR test. We've got the Nichrome wire already wrapped around the cell. Um, we've got it wired up with some uh, a thermocouple on the cell to measure the temperature as we're heating it up. Um, thermocouple in the box. Have a uh, pass through here to connect a tube that will connect to the pressure transducer. Um, I'm going to be putting, I got two, I installed two vents here. Um, we're going to be uh, putting thermocouples at the vent so we can measure the temperature of the vent. So we'll have the internal temp with this thermocouple. We'll have the cell temperature until it goes. And then we'll have uh, the vent temperatures. Uh, one thing I just wanted to point out was, uh, yeah, bought these cells from Amazon. Uh, there's no brand in, um, which is obviously super sketch. Um, they're 21700 cells, 5,000 milliamps milliamp hours and uh, I took this uh, the uh, sleeve off of one of the cells and as you can see brand new straight from receiving this from an Amazon vendor there's a uh, corrosion on the top so yeah be careful when you buy cells um, make sure you're getting it from a reputable vendor you would want to put something sketch into a flashlight or whatever if you're buying replacement battery cells and uh, end up having issues so so we're going to check the voltage on the cell at around 3.99 volts before we get started let's talk about some initial test parameters so our thermal runaway time target is we want to set the cell off into thermal runaway within five minutes so less than or equal to five minutes this is in the line with test standards such as SAE J2464, which calls out setting the cell in the thermal runaway within five minutes. Our power target to achieve this will then need to be 70 watts or around 70 watts. The measurement channels for the test include channel one, which will measure the direct surface temperature of the initiator cell. We'll need that in order to be able to track temperature rise while we're heating the cell. Channel two is the internal enclosure temperature. Channel three is the right vent on the enclosure, external for temperature. Uh, channel four is the left vent temperature and channel five will be connected to our pressure transducer. So we're gonna first measure the resistance of our nichrome wire and we're at 18.4 ohms. So we're okay, given our resistance is 18.4 ohms, I have a power target of 70 watts for the dis heat dissipation into the cell. So that puts us at 1.95 amps for the current. So for the voltage, we'll set the power supply to 35.9 volts based on the 1.95 amps and the 18.4 resistance. So let's get that dialed in and get going all right so we got our test set up all set up here ready to go got a power supply we have our thermocouples connected to our data acquisition system a pressure transducer set up here we're going to go ahead and close up this enclosure but like we talked about before we have a thermocouple measuring air temperature inside of the enclosure we have a battery cell i have a action camera in here We'll see if it survives. Um, and then uh, we got two thermocouples measuring the vent outputs over here. And uh, 
I think we're pretty much ready to go here. All right, so we have our data acquisition software set up here. Our channels are channel one, which is the thermal couple on the initiator cell. We have a thermal couple for the enclosure internal temperature. We have the thermal couple for the right vent. We have the thermal couple for the left vent. And down here is our pressure transducer. So the thermal couples are all reading pretty close. They look pretty good. Um, the transducer too, it's reading like bouncing between like 14 and 15 PSI. So that's looking good. Um, so uh, I think we're ready to hit record and start the test. All right, I'm joined here with another lab assistant, my daughter Charlotte. So I got reliability and test guy junior TJ and Charlotte. And I'm actually his son, actually. Yep, and we're going to get started. So I have two lab assistants. This is definitely going to run smooth. But seriously, full disclosure, I am a highly trained expert in battery testing. Do not try this at home, and especially not with kids. I'm keeping them at a safe distance. I have a tremendous amount of experience doing this. So please, please do not try this at home. That's a full disclaimer right there. If you do something dumb, that's on you. But do not have kids play with batteries and do not play with batteries yourselves. Hundred seventy. Hundred eighty. Not yet. One eighty C. One eighty C. Whoop. Woo! So what does that mean? So just one. Not much playing. Uh. Smoke is coming. There's definitely some smoke. Yeah, you should just go back. Yep, look at that. She's smoking. So can you stand that far? Is that far okay? Yeah, it's good. The smoke's blowing the other way. All right, let's go check out. I'm with my lab assistants. Let's go check out the aftermath. Yep, so it looks like it puked out all of its guts here. Um, we'll examine the cell after this cools down a little bit more. We'll see if the camera survived. It was still on. I turned it off. So looks like we got at least some kind of footage. So uh, wait for this to cool down a little bit more and uh, we'll check out the cell. What's left of it? So what'd you think of the test, buddy? Oh, wow. Do you want to look at this? Hopefully the camera survived because we had it turned off. And then this is the inside. This is the outside to protect it. This won't explode, but this one will explode. And then this is to heat it up. This, we use it to protect us. This wall is broken because it got blown up. And then the rest of the wall survived. So That's right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good, huh? Uh-huh. That's a only a one-lifetime experience. That's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. That's right. For a kid, because... How cool is that? You got to run a test. We got all the data. Life is good. So let's analyze the data, buddy, and see what results we got. Let's see. Footage from that. Let's take a look at the cell here. If we can get it out. Oh. Let's see. Yeah, we'll have to take all this. We'll have to take all this stuff off and uh, see what we're dealing with here. I don't see any side ruptures though. It looks like it was a full, just a uh, top vent, which is what you want out of a cell. Very nice. And this right here, this is, uh, I mean, it's all bits and pieces of the jelly roll, but here's a big chunk of jelly roll here. And uh, here's the top cap. Completely blew off. I saw another piece here. So this is probably part of the vent assembly there. All right, so the Captain tape is removed. I went ahead and took the rest of the uh, remnants of the jelly roll out. Um, 
So yeah, nice clean top vent that occurred with this cell. Now it was at 3.99 volts. Um, maybe it would be a different story if we charge it up to 4.2 volts. But since it had corrosion on the top before, I didn't want to mess with it in case there was something sketchy going on, like it was leaking electrolyte from somewhere. But for this test, it did what it's supposed to do. It vented out the top and uh, yeah, looks good. All right, so let's first take a look at our raw data that we captured here. So we'll scroll down here. We see where we start to climb in temperature. Here we go. All right, so it looks like at around 22.7 is when we started to climb in temperature. So we're gonna use 22.7 as our starting time. And let's see here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, scroll down until we find where thermal runaway was triggered. All right, so the thermal runaway event had occurred around a little over 180 degrees, like around between 183 to 185 C. When I was watching the computer screen, when we heard the pop, and as you can see here, it climbs, climbs, climbs. Let's see where it peaks out here. Okay, so it looks like the peak temperature was around 243 degrees Celsius and then it starts as you can see here it's starting to cool off now so that's after the event going back to where the trigger occurred I forgot to note the time there so it looked like it had occurred around the 185 degree mark here so we'll just run with this initial temp here we'll go with at 312.9 seconds so if we pull up a calculator here let's see if we hit our five minute target then five minutes so let's see here 312 nine minus let's scroll back up here okay so originally i had labeled that we had started to see the temperature rise at 22.7 seconds so let's go ahead and plug that in here so minus 22.7 equals 90 divided by 60 so we went to thermal runaway at 4.84 minutes so we hit our five minute target awesome all right so we went ahead and plotted the data as you can see here the max temperature was 243 in this graph as we also saw in the raw data um, the max temperature happened at 330.9 seconds Okay, so uh, temp one, obviously that's the initiator cell temperature. Temp two is the enclosure temperature, internal uh, enclosure temperature. And then we had the two vents. So one of the vents, we had a little bit of a rise. The other one, uh, we did not. Um, and then here in the uh, pressure data, this stayed flat. There's some scatter plots here. I mean, there's some outliers here, but this pretty much on average stayed pretty flat. Um, plus the time didn't line up, 446.8 seconds into the test while the max temperature was 330 and I would have expected the pressure to actually happen around that early 300 mark um, where the actual thermal event had occurred when the cell popped and went off. So I don't think this transducer uh, worked correctly for this test, unfortunately. Um, plus the enclosure was not sealed and smoke was coming out from every crevice, crevice during the test. So we'll have to just say the pressure data, unfortunately, is null and void. But we got some interesting temperature data here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at key test results for this thermal runaway test. The starting ambient temperature was plus 17.87 degrees Celsius. I averaged this temperature with the four thermocouples used for the test. The start and cell voltage was 3.993 volts. The time to thermal runaway was 4.84 minutes. This met the five minute target that we had set for the test. The max temperature for channel one, the cell temperature, was 243.13 degrees Celsius. 
The max temperature for the internal enclosure temperature was 141.5 degrees Celsius. The max temperature for the right vent, channel 3, was 32.19 degrees Celsius. The left vent temperature max was 35.17 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, there wasn't much of a temperature rise from the vents. The vents didn't really do a whole lot. Um, the enclosure was not sealed, so it pretty much leaked from everywhere. And the vents were pretty small too. So um, that kind of leads us into the pressure transducer data. The max pressure was 15.42 PSI. Um, this happened at around 440 seconds long after the thermal event. So that data probably really doesn't mean anything. The average ambient pressure was around 14.5 PSI. So it was reading pretty accurate for the area that I'm in. Um, either there was an issue with the transducer or the fact that this was not a sealed enclosure. We didn't really get any meaningful uh, pressure data. So results for that are kind of negligible or not really useful. Uh, the venting mode was a normal operation. It was a top vent. That's what you would expect from the cell. So the cell per performed pretty well. It didn't side rupture. There wasn't any other types of failure modes that are out of the norm. So, um, so overall, this test was a, went pretty smoothly and it was a success and the kids loved it. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you need help with your testing, such as thermal runaway testing, don't hesitate to email me in the link below or reach out to me on my website, which is also in the link below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.